American fought a long battle for organ transplantation. She needed another lung transplant. While she was waiting for her transplant, she became an Ireland's spokesperson for organ donation. She spoke passionately about the need for organ donation. I say to all of the school children here, Carolyn proved that one little person can make a great big difference and make up your mind to do something. So when Christopher came through, my mother happened to notice last week, she came to me and said, Brian, I saw a van downtown. It had organ donation or something on it like that. Downtown is probably going through to Newfoundland. So that evening I walked down to the ferry terminal and looked for the organ donor bed, not to be seen. I asked some of the attendants there, oh Brian, we haven't seen it. I said, okay, maybe I, I was mistaken. So I went back home. Ten minutes later, the phone rang. The personnel from Marine went, Brian, the van is here. He's here. So down I went and I met Christopher. Now what a great kid. 14 years old and, and, and facing facing incredible challenges his liver transplant, but he's decided to do this project, to do this walk, to raise the need for organ donor awareness. So that's why I come up to you. Christopher needs the support, he deserves the support, and each and every one of you, when you go home this evening at supper time, you're sitting at your supper table, say to your mother or your father or your brother or your sister or your husband or mother, let's talk about organ donation. Let's make a decision right now. If something happens to one of us, God forbid that it ever does. But guess what? The tragedy is going to strike some families. Make a decision that we're going to be an organ donor family. And you would have done a great, great, great thing. So all I want to do is wish Christopher all the best. I want to support something that George has said. I think that people who are in the organ donor field, people who are waiting for organ donation, and the sad fact is a third of the people who are waiting will die waiting without receiving a transplant. That's a tragedy in this country when there are so many organs available that can fix up every one of them. I think those who practice organ donation, those who are the doctors and the nurses, the people who are involved in the retrieval systems, and people like us, families who have waited, we know the incredible pressure that our health systems are under. And they are under terrible pressure, money pressures and personnel pressures and the doctors and the nurses and all the staff are just unbelievably worked to death. So organ donation kind of gets put off to the side a little bit. So I think it's time in this country, it's certainly time in this province, that we introduce presumed consent legislation. That would be a law that the government would put in place, and the law would say, everybody is an organ donor, unless you write in and say no. It protects your personal choice. It protects you. If you don't want to be an organ donor, you just write a letter into the government saying, I don't want to be. If you do, you don't have to do anything. Just sit there and merrily go on your way. So presumed consent is the next step in this country. Many countries in Europe have it. And their organ donor rates are 10 times what they are in Canada. Significant, significantly increased. So that's the thoughts I want to leave you. Be organ donors, support organ donation, and let's all support Christmas. Thank you.
tell me where am I, what am I doing, and I'm going to hang out. And then we went to their uh, meeting yesterday for their baseball team. And uh, they handed me with a plaque, a uh, picture of them, and CD, and uh, all kinds of stuff. And, uh, just like to thank them for that. And you guys are great. I'm coming back next year. Good to see you. Um, I'd also like you guys to meet my uh, road team. Uh, you already met George, uh, my road manager, George Marcello, um, over there with the camera, uh, film director and driver of the van, Merle Roberts. Back, at the back, my dad finally has his camera. Uh, <laughs> Thank candles. you, Dominion Hawks. And um, uh, when we get to the school, when we get to the school, um, my dad made a video that we're going to be seeing, and uh, it tells pretty much my life and everything. So uh, thank you, and I'd also like to thank the Delta Hotel for giving us accommodations. It's nice of you. I'd like to thank Smitty's uh, Restaurant for uh, feeding us this morning and probably tomorrow morning. <laughs> Napoli, we also like, like Napoli Pizzeria, and, uh, what? The Savory Gourmet, and Bistro 100. Bistro? Bistro? They're going to be helping us, feeding us, on our stage. All right, thank you. Yeah, baby. 